So the prologue and chapter one. Maddie Sykes picked up the telephone, confident it was the call she'd been expecting. Is it done? It's done, replied the voice. The woman, the woman, the kid too. The kid? She wasn't alone. There was a kid there as well. But relax, it's been taken care of. Sykes pressed her fingertips to the ridge of her nose. You killed a kid. I never told you to kill a kid. I didn't say I killed the kid. What I said was, the kid's been taken care of. Wait, said Sykes. You didn't kill the kid. You left him, her, whoever. You left it alive. What the hell am I paying you for? Him. I left him alive. But relax, would you? I told you it's sorted, and it is. You're safe, I promise you. Your precious shipment too. This thing, the cops, the investigation, even the kid. Believe me when I tell you, it's over. Chapter One. Night Terrors. Ollie Turner was asleep when the men came. They were dressed in black and wearing balaclavas. Before Ollie knew what was happening, they pulled him from his bed and dragged him across the carpet towards the landing. Hey, Ollie cried. He caught a glimpse of a shorter man watching from the stairs. Ollie couldn't see his face, but from the way the man was standing, arms crossed, feet apart, Ollie could tell he was in charge. Ollie wriggled, but it did no good. He called for Nancy, his guardian, and one of the men clapped a hand around his mouth. In the distance, he heard a muffled cry, and Ollie could tell the men had got Nancy too. She was already being bundled towards the door of their flat. Ollie was an afterthought, it seemed, a loose end. Nancy was the one the men had come for. They must have been good to catch Nancy unawares. Ollie's guardian was a policewoman and an expert at everything she did. But somehow these men had taken her captive. What did they want from her? At the top of the staircase, one of the men picked Ollie up, throwing him across his shoulder, the way Ollie rem remembered his father doing when Ollie was young. Ollie tried to yell for help, but it was all he could do through the gag just to breathe. At some point, they managed to find his hands behind his back, and the man held his legs to stop him from kicking. There was a van waiting for them on the street outside, parked at an angle over the curb. The rear doors were open, like a gaping mouth, and the man got ready to throw Ollie inside. Ollie caught a glimpse of Nancy, already sprawled in the back of the vehicle. She was bound like him, around her ankles as well as her hands, and didn't appear to be moving. Nancy, Ollie tried to say, but when the man threw him into the van beside her, Ollie's head hit the metal floor, and the world abruptly went black. When Ollie awoke, the ground beneath him was cold and hard, and his hands remained bound behind his back. It wasn't in the van anymore, but in a room he didn't recognise. No windows, bare walls, and a dusty grey concrete floor. Nancy was lying just beside him. She was facing away, and she wasn't moving. Nancy, Ollie hissed, desperately. Nancy had brought Ollie up since he was seven years old, since the day his real parents had been killed in a terrorist attack. Six years on, Nancy was the person Ollie cared for most in the entire world and the only person, he would have said, who truly cared for him. When Nancy didn't respond, Ollie clumsily shuffled upright. He managed to get his feet from under him, and wriggled until he was sitting. Nancy, Ollie said again. He kept his voice low, wary of letting his captors, his captors know he'd woken up. They wouldn't be far away, Ollie was certain, and even the slightest noise might bring them back. He tried nudging his guardian with his knees, and spoke again into her ear. Wake up, please, Nancy, you have to wake up. Nothing. Nancy didn't even moan. Ollie was crying, he realised. Please, he repeated, not caring now about how loudly he spoke. He didn't even care about the men anymore. He just wanted Nancy to show him that she was all right. Nancy! This time, finally, Nancy responded. She let out a whimper and attempted to roll onto her back. When Ollie said her name again, she came around far more quickly than Ollie had. Ollie, is that, is that you? Where are we? Are you OK? Are you hurt? No, I... Even as he spoke, Ollie winced at a stabbing pain in his head. He must have hit it hard when he'd been thrown into the back of the van. Nancy, you need to sit up, he said. We need to get out of here. Those men, they'll... As if on cue, Ollie heard voices from outside the room. There were two doors he saw, one ahead of him and another behind, but neither offering a clue to where they led. Nancy had heard the voices too. She rolled herself upright, with far more agility than Ollie had shown. Turn around, Ollie. Put your back to mine. Ollie didn't pause to ask questions. He did as Nancy had instructed, and immediately he could feel her fingers picking at the knot that was trapping his wrists. She was working blind, but in seconds Ollie found his hands free. Now untie me, Nancy said. Work fast, Ollie, she added, as once again they heard voices outside the door. 
Molly looked at the rope around Nancy's wrists and couldn't believe she had untied him so quickly. The knot in front of him was an inscrutable riddle of cord. Hurry, Ollie, they're coming. Ollie picked at the rope with his fingernails, but he couldn't work the slightest gap. I can't, Nancy, the knot, it's too tight. Nancy spun to face him. Try the rope around my feet. Well, he did, but if anything, the knot here was tighter still. He scrabbled with his fingers, felt one of his fingernails break. It was no good. He started looking around for something sharp he might use to cut the rope. The room was empty, the floor bare, but even a piece of glass might do, or a bit of metal, or... Ollie. Ollie. Look at me, Ollie. Ollie stopped moving. In the silence, they heard voices right outside. Run. Do you hear me, Ollie? You need to run. But... Run, Ollie. Now. Go. Ollie shook his head. He felt tears jostle free as he did so. I won't leave you. I won't. His vision blurred, and he wiped his eyes. Nancy was smiling. I love you, Ollie Turner, with all my heart. And if you love me, I will do as I ask. Run, Ollie, please. The door ahead of them cracked open. The men were here, now. Ollie had time to let out one final sob, and then he ran. He wasn't three steps through the door opposite when he heard the shots. Every instinct told Ollie to stop, to turn around, to go back. But it was his guardian's voice in his head that kept him running. Go, she said, please. He wouldn't let her down. He couldn't. After the shots, he heard a shout behind him, and then the rapid pound of bootsteps. Ollie reckoned he had a 20 metre head start at best. As he ran, Ollie tried to take in his surroundings, to get a clue about where he should be heading. The corridor he found himself in was one long, anonymous passageway. His best guess was that he was in the office part of a factory of some kind, something industrial anyway, where nobody cared much what the building looked like. He rounded a corner, and heard more men approaching from up ahead. There was a door in the corridor, with a key in the lock, and Ollie realised it was his only option. He unlocked the door and peeked inside. The, the door opened onto the top of a wooden staircase. There was no light on and no sight or sound of anyone within, just the steps shearing off into the darkness below. Ollie swallowed. Even at 13 years old, he was afraid of the dark. But he was afraid of men with guns on balance slightly more. He stepped across the threshold and before the men could have seen him, closed the door and turned the key. He exhaled. The air felt thick, unbreathed and there was a smell like the weak old contents of his gym bag. All at once the door started shaking. Someone on the other side was trying the handle. Ollie backed away from the door, and his left foot slipped into a void. He looked down and realised he'd reached the edge of the platform at the top of the staircase. He flailed, and felt his fingertips scrape brickwork. His other hand hooked around the wooden stair pole, and somehow he managed to haul himself upright. His heart thumping, he looked below him to try to see where he would have fallen, and almost slipped again when in the darkness saw another pair of eyes staring up. Ollie yelped. He scrabbled away from the top of the staircase, pressing his back against the door. It clattered in its frame as the eyes below him vanished. He clamped a hand around his mouth, but too late. Voices filtered through from the corridor outside. In here. I thought I heard something. I'll open it up then. I can't find the key. It should be in the lock. The key. Ollie unclenched his right hand from around his mouth and realised it was empty. He must have dropped the key when he'd lost his balance. How on earth was he supposed to get out now? A crash against the door behind him was his answer. Ollie didn't need to worry about breaking out. Whoever was out there was intent on breaking in. Harder, put your shoulder into it. This time the door trembled so much, Ollie was sure it was about to give way. The door reverberated with the force of another blow, and this time the, fr the frame split all the way to the floor. One more thrust, Ollie reckoned, and they would be through. Ollie crouched, preparing to throw himself at the men. But the final thrust never came. Instead he heard... What was that? Silence. Full of boy a noise somewhere in the distance. Then, over there, quick! The men outside thundered off. Ollie let up the breath he didn't know he'd been holding. He was safe, he realised. For the time being, at least. That was what he thought. Until the door burst open. Ollie flinched and staggered away. When he turned back, he saw a man grinning in the doorway, gleefully staring down at what he'd caught. So thank you for listening. There'll be uh, another chapter available tomorrow. Um, so don't forget to click the link below to subscribe. Uh, and if you want to get yourselves a, a copy of the book, uh, maybe to read along, um, or if you want to order the next books in the series, The Haven Revolution and The Haven Deadfall, um, then uh, a lot of independent bookshops are, are delivering at the moment. A lot of them are hand delivering. Uh, so, so please try and support them if you can. Um, otherwise, the Amazon link is also down below uh, and you can order the books there. So thanks again and see you next time.